In this chapter, we're going to learn uh, dense estimation. So in pattern recognition, the, all the algorithms implicitly or explicitly, the algorithms do dense estimation. That's what we want. Okay. And then there are a couple of approaches. So in this chapter, we're going to learn a couple of methods, dense estimation method. So first, we'll talk about what the dense estimation is, and then Basically, we have a couple of different approaches, parametric method approach and non-parametric and semi-parametric method. And then in the parametric method, we're going to learn what parameter estimation first in general. And then we will uh, learn maximum likelihood estimation, which is one of the most popular uh, dense estimation algorithms for parametric method. And as a non-parametric method, we are going to learn the kernel dense estimation and k nearest to neighbors. And as a semi-parametric method, we'll talk about mixture of Gaussians. And before talking about the dense estimations, uh, we we have to talk about why we need a dense estimation. Okay, so let's compare vector and distribution. Uh, for a data sample, we need a vector representation. Okay. So when we have one data sample, the vector is perfect way to represent the data sample. And when we have many data samples, then you know the vectors, yes, we can use vectors to represent all these samples, but it's hard to understand the data samples. So in that case, we need a distribution, distribution of the samples to understand the, the data set. So as an example, if you take an exam, then you got a score X, okay? And usually uh, if you take just one a classic exam, then we have one score number, which is a scalar. And then how do we know uh, how good your score is? Let's say you got the 70. Then is it a good or bad? It depends on the distribution. If there are lots of uh, students with uh, 80, and if you get the 70 here, then your score is not quite good. But if the distribution looks like this, then your score is quite good. So to understand the, the samples, then we need the distribution. So that's why we want to estimate the density, density or distribution. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the density estimations. So density estimation is an estimation of an underlying probability density function, P of X, based on the observed data and samples. Okay. Assuming that the observed data are random samples drawn from the density function. This is quite important uh, assumption. So all these data samples are coming from one unknown density function. So this is uh, identical distribution. X1 is coming from one density function and x2 is coming from the same density function randomly okay so we have n random samples from the same density function this is a strong assumption here and with density estimation we can understand the population okay so for example if we have some distribution of the age in our populations in our country then we can understand the population in terms of age. Okay, if we have a distribution of a weight, or distribution of height, then we can understand the population in terms of the height or the weight. Again, if we know the density of population, then we can say we know the population. And then the density can be used for classification. In this, we talked about unsupervised way. So there is no labels. We have bunch of uh, samples, then if we estimate the distribution, then we can understand the data samples. And if we have labels, then we can use uh, this dense estimation for a classification. Given the labels and the data samples, then we can estimate the class conditional density P of X given C K. And then uh, we can use the base rule to to find this p of c k given x is what we want for classification right and then this one can be written uh, like this 
So uh, this is uh, a prior distribution for the class. So if we have no idea about this one, then we can use simply the uniform distribution. And uh, this one is coming from this uh, density estimation. So which means you know, when we have lots of samples, uh, we have uh, class one and class two. Then we gather all the samples from the first class and then we do some advanced estimation. That's what uh, P of X C sub one means. And then from this, we can get P of X given C two. Okay. Uh, simply uh, is basically same as just unsupervised density estimation. Just we have one condition here. When we uh, classify one sample, we need the P of C1 given X and P of C, C2 given X, etc. So P, C, K given X. So as long as we know all these probability, then we can, we can see which class has the, the highest probability. Then we can classify it to that class. And in this case, the constant is nothing. So as long as we can compare this one and this one, this one, then we can classify. So if you look at this equation, then we, if we don't have any prior information, then we can use a uniform distribution. So this probability is equal to all the cases. So we can cancel. And P of X is the same for all the classes. So we can cancel. So actually this probability is proportional to this. So as long as we know this probability, then we can classify with this probability. Now, uh, we want to talk about some different approaches for density estimation. First one, parametric method. So parametric method means we assume one uh, functional form, and then we estimate the parameters in the, f in the functional form. And by estimating the parameters, we find the optimal function. For example, if we assume that the functional form is Gaussian, then to define a Gaussian distribution, we have a mean and variance as parameters. So as long as we estimate the mean and variance, then we can estimate the density. That's one a good example of parametric method. And there is another a method, non-parametric method. In this case, we have no assumption on the distribution. So we just estimate the density directly from the data. So as a simple example, we can think of histogram. So in the histogram, technically there are a couple of parameters, but it is different from the parametric method. Okay, these parameters are not the parameter of the function. But anyway, there is no real parameters. In this case, we don't assume anything about the distribution. So based on this histogram, you know this bars are histograms and from these bars we can uh, have a density so this is actually a density okay and then the last one is a semi-parametric method in this case we actually extend the parametric method to more complicated complex distributions so it's very general and it has more parameters than the parametric method so uh, we will focus on this parametric method and non-parametric method. First one, parametric uh, methods. Before talking about parametric method, we have to talk about the parameter estimation. So parameter estimation is a more general kind of thing than just density estimation. So in estimation theory, we want to estimate unknown parameters from data. Okay. Let's assume that there are two parameters theta, and then we have estimator that hat. So, for example, uh, if we want to estimate the height of this country, okay, then we have to measure all all the height from the, all the populations. Then there is the true mean and the variance, but it's not possible. So there is a true parameter theta, but it is unknown and it's not possible to get because we cannot measure all people's height at the same time. So we have a true parameter theta, but it's hidden. But instead, 
we can estimate that uh, parameter. For example, we can actually measure a thousand person's height. And then from that uh, samples, we can estimate the mean and we can estimate the variance. That's the estimator. So usually we use hat here. For a true parameter, we don't have hat. We just use the theta. And then in the, in the estimation theory, there are two important concepts. First one is bias. The bias is actually an error from assumptions in the learning algorithms. If bias is high, then it means the model is underfitting. And the bias is defined in this way. So this one is expectation of the estimator, and this one is a true parameter. If the bias is zero, then it is unbiased. If bias is, is not zero, then it is biased. And uh, the next one is variance. Variance is an error from sensitivity to small fluctuations in the data. So if the variance is high, it means probably the model is overfitted. Okay. And the uh, variance is defined in this way. So this one is our estimator. And this one is a true parameter. And then we take a square and then expectation. If this one is small, then uh, that's good. In, in general, the, our estimator is supposed to be unbiased with the minimum variance. Okay, that's what we want. And we want unbiased and the minimum variance estimator but there is a trade-off between these two uh, concepts, bias and variance. So if we minimize bias, then sometimes we increase variance slightly. And when we minimize this variance, we increase bias slightly. So uh, we have to find the best point. Sometimes you know, the minimum uh, variance with unbiasedness is not the solution sometimes because of that trade-off. Now let's talk about bias variance trade-off. Okay, so theta is a true parameter and, and theta hat is an estimator. And we can define an error like this. It's a square of the difference. And then if we unfold this square, then we got this. And then we can add this term and one more and we can subtract this. So basically this is zero. So we didn't do anything here. We just added zero. And then we can rearrange these terms. This one, this one, this one here. And then the other ones will be here. Okay. Then if we uh, look at this one, then we can uh, rearrange into this term and uh, this one will be like this okay then if we look at this term this one is this one is a bias and this one is a bias square and this one is the variance of that hat okay so when we have this error this error is actually bias square plus variance so there is a trade-off uh, this is total error, okay, and this one is model complexity. When we increase the model complexity, bias square decreases like this. Okay, and then while uh, when we increase the model complexity, the variance increases like this. So when the bias is high, then probably this one is underfitting. And when the variance is high, probably this one is coming from the overfitting. Okay. And since the error is a sum of these two, then if we want to minimize this error, then the optimal model complexity is around here. Okay. Because this error is minimized at this point. Now let's talk about maximum likelihood estimation. So MLE is actually a parameter estimation for density estimation. Okay. So we define a function as a distribution and then we want to estimate the parameters of the distribution by maximizing a likelihood function. So likelihood function is actually probability distributions 
like this one p of x given theta 1 so theta 1 is a parameters so we have a functional form for this density uh, function okay for example uh, we can think of a gaussian distribution here then the theta 1 and theta 2 will be uh, a set of mean and the variance okay so theta 1 has a mean and the variance and theta 2 has its own mean and the variance and theta 3 has on its own mean and and variance okay so if we have a specific parameters then we have a distribution like like this and then the likelihood is actually calculating how likely the samples are coming from this distribution for example in this graph we have a five samples here and then if we change the parameters for the gaussian distribution then we can come up with many many distributions so in this graph i'm just showing three examples one two three okay and out of these three which one is more likely than the others which means these uh, samples are probably coming from this distribution rather than this or this right so that's more likely that's likely the function again okay? if we define if we fix these parameters at a certain value then uh, we can define the distribution function exactly and then we can calculate the probability of these samples for example if we assume these green distributions here and then if we have a uh, five samples then the probability looks like this we have a probability here and here and here and here so all of these five samples are not likely okay but if we assume that uh, these parameters are like this and then we we assume this distribution and then these samples are a lot more likely coming from this distribution okay so that's that's what a likelihood function does okay so uh, maximum likelihood estimate is the estimated parameters maximizing the likelihood function and it's very intuitive and dominant in statistics so let's start talking about the likelihood with a specific example especially with the gaussian distribution okay uh, with the gaussian distributions uh, first we have to define the likelihood and the likelihood looks like this so basically in general the likelihood is this one so probability of all the axes given the parameters okay and uh, the samples are independent okay so n samples are independent so we can use this product okay now this one is is about just one sample okay and then so we assume that this probability distribution is gaussian so instead of just p we use normal distribution here and instead of theta we have a mu and sigma squares okay then given these uh, specific values then let's assume that this is our distribution and if we have a samples like this and this one is not likely so if we draw some random samples from this dis this distribution if the sample is here this one is not likely but it's possible but not likely this one is a lot likely so uh, we can we can get these samples around here more likely in this distribution what we want is to to update these parameters to increase the likelihood of all the samples okay so we have to maximize this the equation by updating these parameters and before talking about the opt uh, updating we have one more thing which is log functions because log function is a monotonic function so it doesn't change the parameters i mean when the function is maximum then we can get the maximum likelihood estimate and when we apply the log function but it doesn't change the uh, maximum uh, likelihood estimate even though the 
the function value will be different. So it makes the likelihood equation much simpler. That's, that's the reason why we take this log function here. Especially when uh, the distribution is, is based on the exp exponential family, like uh, uh, Gaussian distribution. Gaussian distribution has exponential function there. And if we take a log function, then the equation will be much simpler and easier. Okay, So, originally, this is what we do uh, for the maximum likelihood. So, this is likelihood, and we want to maximize by changing the parameter theta. And that is that hat. Okay. You know the difference between the max and the arg max? So max is the maximum value and arg max is the parameter that maximizes the function. Okay. So this one is about the parameter which maximizes the function, this one. And then if we take a log, then this one is not changing. Okay, maximum value is changing, but the parameter is not changing. So this one is Gaussian distribution. Uh, the estimate is here. And if we take the log, then it looks like this. So this one is not changing. So when the theta hat is here, we got the maximum. Uh, likewise, even after this log function, when the theta hat is here, we got the maximum. And the given n samples, this is what we want. Okay, so we apply the log function to the likelihood. This one is actually px given theta, right? When we have a log and product, then we can have sum and log. Okay, so now we will focus on this. Now let's calculate the MLE for Gaussian. And from the previous slide, uh, uh, we want to use a log function, okay? And this is uh, log likelihood, and instead of x, then we can use each sample here, and then we have a sum, okay? Then if you remember the uh, Gaussian distribution equation, by applying log, we have uh, this term here, and uh, this part, is here and since we have a sum sum goes into this okay so this is our log likelihood function for gaussian distribution so it's a simple in in terms of uh, sigma square we have one sigma square and another sigma square here and for mean we have mean here okay and to get the mle and the approach is quite simple. Just take a derivative and the derivative should be zero. Okay, then that's how we get MLE for Gaussian. Okay, if we take a, a derivative and set it to zero, then the MLE mean is like this and the MLE uh, sigma square will be like this. And the MLE mean is a minimum variance unbiased estimator. We are going to see why we say it is unbiased. And then the MLE variance is biased with minimum variance. Okay. Now let's calculate. Okay, to estimate the mean, we take a derivative with respect to a mean and set it to zero. Okay, and then if you look at this equation, this term and this term have nothing to do with uh, mean. So when we take a derivative, then we just cancel. And uh, let's focus on this term. And, and uh, this two is going forward and they cancel each other. And now we have one over sigma square. And, and that's it. And then uh, this one is one over sigma square. Sigma xn is one over sigma square mu. And actually, uh, we can multiply sigma square both sides, so we just cancel. And then the mu is actually, you know, here is constant. So this one is actually n times mu. And then we have a sum here. So if we move this one to this side, then this one is our MLE estimate. 
and about the variance we do the same thing so in this case the sigma square is one variable okay we don't just use a sigma okay sigma square is just one variable and then this one has nothing to do with the sigma square so we just cancel and for this one we have this one and for this term we have this one and set it to zero and then we rearranged the terms and then we got this one so this one is MLE variance okay and in the previous slide the x the samples are scalar so we talked about the univariate Gaussian distribution now when the x is a vector then the the mean should be vector and the variance should be covariance matrix okay. we use the same thing here we apply the log function to the multivariate Gaussian so it looks like this okay and then to estimate the mean then it's almost same as before and then to estimate the variance we need a little trick so we have to take a derivative of a determinant okay then we do the same thing and uh, following these equations finally we got this one okay this is MLE and before I said the MLE um, estimator for mean is unbiased but the variance estimator is biased so uh, I'm going to show you why okay so we take uh, expectation of this estimator okay and then this one was was actually this one from the previous slide so we just expect it, we calculate the expectation of this term and the expectation can come into this summation and then we have this term here and this is tricky part so this is expectation of one sample and the expectation of one sample is actually the mean okay so the sum over mu is n times mu and we have 1 over n here so they cancel each other so finally we got mean so this equation says when we take expectation of this estimator then it is actually true mean okay so it is unbiased but when we calculate expectation of this uh, variance estimator then the if we follow this then this is what we got so if you look at this this side and this side okay when we take an expectation then it is not exactly sigma square so it is biased okay actually the expectation is smaller than the true variance actually we have a uh, inequality here so actually unbiased variance estimator for variance is like this so we multiply n over n minus 1 to MLE estimator for a variance then this is actually unbiased variance estimator for variance so it looks like this so sometimes you know even in excel file when we calculate variance sometimes we use 1 over n or sometimes we use 1 over n minus 1 so if we use 1 over n minus 1 it is unbiased but if we use 1 over n, this one is maximum likelihood estimator. You might get confused with this biasness and biasness. So let me explain what biasness means here. Okay, as I said, maximum likelihood estimator is related to overfitting. And it is biased to the samples. That's what overfitting means in general. And so we have an example here. So let's say we have uh, three sets of two samples. So we have uh, two samples here and we have uh, three sets. So let's look at these sets. So if we calculate the mean with these two samples, then mean will be around here. Okay. And if we calculate the mean with these two samples, then mean will be around here. And if we calculate the mean here, then mean is here. Okay, this one is estimator for the mean okay and then we have a three estimators if we take an average then probably it will converge to this one okay it's unbiased but if we check the variance so let's say with these two samples if we calculate the variance then the variance will be like this and with this one 
if you calculate the variance then the variance will be like this and with this one variance will be like this but the true distribution looks like this that's why we have samples here and here and here okay so in the true distributions the mean is here and the variance looks like this so variance is quite large but with the two samples when we uh, find the maximum likelihood estimator then the mean is here then variance is here and the mean is here variance is here and mean mean and variance and then when we take an average of these three then the mean is converging to the true or mean but the variance let's take an average of uh, this variance 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 then probably the average will be like this which is way much smaller than true variance MLE mean changes with different sets okay so here and here and here so expectation converges actually becomes mu itself but sigma square ml does not change if the distance is the same in this case we use uh, some specific types of uh, samples here but if the distance is the same then the sigma does not change okay then expectation will be this one so it's the same as just uh, MLE variance MLE estimator and this expectation is smaller than sigma square so each MLE is kind of overfitted to the samples that's the, that's the limit of maximum likelihood estimator